I was in Jordan, in Amman, on the 15th of February. And we'd, I'd been there a few days and we were preparing to go to Baghdad. And I remember the manager of the hotel um, calling me in to, to watch the TV with him, the news coverage, and what I saw was just astounding. I just couldn't believe it. And that was almost every major capital city in the world, there was huge, massive outpouring uh, of the public in protest to this war. If you believe that that is wrong, make some noise. Barcelona, London, uh, right across the United States, and of course one of the first on the news was Sydney. It was massive. I, I said to the manager, Fayez, I said, I've never seen anything like that in Sydney. I said, I've never seen those numbers for anything. I was in um, Ireland um, in February 2003, and I kind of had this sense about being part of something so much bigger than myself. Um, and I'd heard the stories come in about what had happened in protest marches around the world. And so there was this great sense of celebration that rather than just accepting this inevitability of war and militarism and going to attack the enemy, this whole uprising across the world. So I remember just kind of, you know, and picking up the posters all around me and just knowing that this was a massive kind of uh, outpouring of, of hope. So we went with our video camera into Hyde Park and uh, we kind of blagged our way onto the, uh, the upper platform of the stage which was reserved for the media and pointed our camera downwards and we were absolutely astonished at the sheer numbers of people who kept on coming through into the park for that demonstration. The other significant thing is that it was attended by people from all walks of life, uh, ordinary people, young and old, from across the country. I just feel so strongly that it would be absolutely the wrong thing to do to go to war in Iraq. Actually, I remember being uh, profoundly frustrated and angry about what was going on. I felt we were being lied to the whole time. I, I thought the rhetoric of the governments, uh, Australian government and other Western governments, didn't make any sense. And I felt that no matter what we were saying as the people, that we were just not being listened to. I also felt incredible sadness for the people of Iraq and what was going to happen to them. I was the victim of a SCUD attack in 1991 in Israel before I came to Australia. And one SCUD made so much damage and frightened me for so many years. And I was thinking what they were going to do to the Iraqis was going to be much more devastated and devastating than that. It was going to be horrible. And I was also feeling terrible for the soldiers who were going to go from Australia to fight in a war that they have nothing to do with. So it was a mixed mixture of feelings, a lot of frustration and uh, powerlessness as well. The amount of energy that goes into preparing for war and what it does is creates an atmosphere that the enemy is wrong. And you build that up just like before the war with Iraq. We had all this thing about how, how Iraq was evil and Saddam Hussein was evil and there was a lot of exaggerated stuff and how he was a terrorist and it was all ridiculous. I was handing out leaflets uh, about the rally that was going to be held in Sydney and usually when you hand out leaflets for rallies and things, people just ignore you and kind of turn away from you. On this occasion, um, people were grabbing, people were putting their hands up and grabbing the leaflets and I couldn't hand them out quickly enough. This is President Bush's war. This is Prime Minister Blair's war. This is John Howard's war. But this is not Australia's war. Australians don't want war. There was immense joy on the occasion. 
and an enormous sense of determination. Everyone was saying they can't ignore this. Enormous feeling of sort of we are the people and we can do it. It was about a million. You know, that, that's 5% of the entire population that, that came out of their houses and went onto the street. Mothers and, and fathers and children and uh, ordinary people, business people out on the streets, um, you know, united in one cause was, was quite a powerful experience. Someone brought along a, a contraption which had John Howard dressed as a dog and then they made the, the dog move over and kiss President Bush's backside. That was the sort of um, feeling that Howard was just Bush's man, but there was this feeling of confidence that, the, that this number of people would surely convince even a Howard government. This was the first time in history that people had rallied and demonstrated against a war before it started. This was something very, very different and uh, something very special. And I think it's something to hold on to. In the real build-up, I was in Sydney and I was really depressed about it. And I was sitting in this horrible, dark, dank, grimy, dismal, sticky carpet pub on a beautiful sunny, sunny afternoon. Um, just sort of, you know, feeling really, really angry about the whole thing. And as I was sitting there, I realised that the whole bar had fallen silent. And the guy behind the bar, the barman, was like, you know, groping for his uh, remote control and he was, you know, turning the sound up on the television. Everyone was turning around and looking at the television. And I, I turned around I, I looked and I saw the Sydney Opera House with no war written in big red letters across the top sail. And I was like, oh my God. Just before nine, they scaled the outside of the largest sail and had 20 minutes to do their handiwork in thick red paver paint. The two men blocked a door with access to the peak, forcing police rescue to climb to the top. It was all very friendly, obviously at a height like that you don't muck around with anybody's life. And then I saw the face of David Burgess on the screen. I was like, you, of course it's you, and, and Will Saunders also. Um, and I just think that was such a powerful and beautiful moment for so many of us who were feeling so frustrated because we wanted the world to know that not everybody in Australia was supportive of this war. 33-year-old David Burgess and 42-year-old English national Dr Will Saunders were charged and released on conditional bail. Both were unapologetic. Our Prime Minister is about to go and maliciously damage a whole nation. I ask you all again, what will you do today to stop the war? I remember I was very uncertain um, as to just how successful we will be. And of course, um, as we know, uh, people in the political executive don't really take all that much notice of the people. And they don't even take that much notice of international law. And that's a really great tragedy. There's no quick and easy, easy way. And I think um, similarly with the outpouring of opposition to the invasion of Iraq, um, it, in the short term it wasn't successful. But in the longer term, if we can... Um, Lee, if we can get the Australian public thinking about the fact that this mustn't happen again and that we need a different process. For example, we need a process whereby Parliament approves before our troops go to war, then that would be a positive outcome. A lot of people felt at the time, well, we demonstrated, we did our best, we did everything we could, and yet we failed to stop the invasion. And I've had countless conversations with people in which that has exerted a rather depressing effect on their willingness to join in future efforts to try to forestall wars. However, what I would say is that that demonstration did more than anything to establish public opinion as a player in any future calculation to go to war. And with the outturn of the Iraq war, uh, the fact that all its stated justifications turned out to be false, so people who went on those demonstrations should not feel despondent they should instead feel that they have acted decisively to make the world a safer place. This song is called Lion Hearts. 
Though these days one power reigns, there's you who will find what the truth is. To you so brave, we give you the name Lionheart. Days, these we've had the chance to find out what is real, and these illusions appear before us, being all we see. There's voices in the distance, but it's getting hard to hear them through the smoke screens. The sounds are the pleading of those who lies in bondage, wrongly suffering. We give you the name Lion.